So we had done the solid state and we saw the difference between the, the amorphous solids and the crystalline solid, right? Now we'll see that it is basically the forces which hold the solids that actually decide what will be the property of the solids, both the physical and the chemical, okay? So it is the, the forces, so it is the forces which decide the the solid so the topic is classification of classification of crystalline solids crystalline solids so we saw that we though we come across both the amorphous as well as the crystalline crystalline but mostly many a times we'll come across the crystalline solid and we concentrate our attention on the crystalline solid so though we do come across come across the amorphous solids solids mostly the solids are crystalline okay are uh, crystalline crystalline okay Okay, so mostly they are crystalline and their nature depends on and the properties of the crystalline solids, solids depend on, on the force of interaction between their molecules <clears throat> interaction between their molecules okay based on that we divide all the solids all the crystalline solids into four categories okay based on this there are four categories of solids okay of obviously crystalline solids of crystalline solids okay So the first in line is the molecular solid. So, so the first is the, the molecular solid. Okay. It is the molecular solid. <coughs> okay. The forces which hold together the 
molecular solid are weak forces okay they are weak forces <coughs> so so they are further subdivided they are further subdivided into into three categories okay three categories the the first amongst those is is the non polar non polar molecular solid okay the non polar molecular solid and and molecular solids why why do we call them we call them molecular solids because they 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 are their constituent particles are molecules okay so the constituent particles are constituent particles are molecules now non polar molecular solids okay non polar molecular solid as the name suggests as the name suggests and i'll i'll elaborate more on what a polar is and what a dipole moment is just in the next category but here they are either atoms or molecules held together by by weak forces by weak forces okay <coughs> by weak forces which are i hope you Uh, remember what we studied in class eleven by weak forces, which are called dispersion or London forces. London forces. They are basically weak forces that operate between two molecules. Okay, so they operate between two molecules. okay example example noble gases okay they are atoms so noble gases or say h2 the the forces between the h2 i2 cl2 molecules now this thing is defining thing because the weak forces are acting so everything gets decided by that so what what will be some of the few some of the few properties so so as a result as a result what do we have we have as a result we have they are they are these are soft solids soft solids hmm They are soft, or either they are soft solids, or they are, or are gases, or liquid at room temperature. What else? Since they are held weakly, they have low melting or boiling points. Low if they are solids. melting in the liquids boiling low melting or boiling points they normally non conductors of non conductors of electricity okay non conductors of electricity
the second category here is is of the polar molecular solids polar molecular solids okay they are polar molecular solids polar molecular solids now as this 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 word signifies they have they are polarized they have their own dipole moments now what do you mean by a dipole moment when we have got equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance we say that the particle has got or the or the or the system has got a dipole moment okay so what happens what happens so two equal and opposite charges two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance separated by a small distance okay is called a dipole or is called a dipole and it has a dipole moment this is a this is a, this is an elaborate subject matter of physics and that we will study in physics right so so it's called a dipole every dipole every dipole has a dipole moment as a dipole moment and dipoles are or uh, say say suppose you have minus q here and a plus q here and they are separated by say a distance 2a if they are separated by a distance 2a now be careful try to understand in physics the direction of the dipole moment is from the negative to the positive okay so the physics for physics the direction is like this this is physics for chemistry the direction is like this okay now it sounds weird but it is not because even in physics or in chemistry whatever you did you did with the convention due to certain reasons that i'll elaborate when we when we do the interaction between them there is a solid reason why we why we define like this in physics and like this in chemistry the physics part i'll do in physics but you think about chemistry in chemistry we are more bothered about where my electron has gone why because it is the electron which is responsible like in physics the electron is responsible for electricity in chemistry the electrons are responsible for bonding okay so we are concerned more about our positive charges so we show it to be to we want where is sorry 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 sorry, 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 sorry. this is your chemistry okay and this is your this is your physics okay this is your physics so in chemistry it is from positive to negative and and we should be very careful about that okay this is because we want where my electron has gone and they are right in doing that and they show it something like this they actually in chemistry they have a tendency of showing it like this this part looks like a positive one no so you should understand the chemistry one the physics one is opposite okay the, the physics is also very justified in taking it as opposite that you will soon realize because normally that is the angle that's how the angle 
of the dipole is made with the electric field and that decides what the torque is, that decides what the field is. So that's why they take it like that. Now once there is a dipole moment, once there is a dipole moment, anything that is here that starts getting attracted or repelled by this depending on depending on what the dipole moment is. So first of all, you understand what dipole moment is. The dipole moment, the dipole moment is given by 2A into Q. Okay. The dipole moment becomes 2A into Q. Fine. 2A into Q. Why we define it like that? That has another history. So don't worry about that. Because higher this value, higher is the field that it exerts. Okay, higher is its, its effect on the neighboring atoms. Why? Because this has got a net field due to the separation. It produces a net field in this direction, in physics in this direction. It produces field in this direction, in the same direction as this. So here if you see the field, it will be like that. Here the field is like that. Now this field has got a capacity to polarize something else. Okay, some other atom and, 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 and why are we dealing with dipole moments? I, I, I do not know. This was done in class 11th, I suppose. No. Hmm? What? No. I also teach class 11th. Plus. Minus. Now what happens? If it is under a field, these are electrons, say, this is under the influence of a field, then what happens? This atom, this electron has got tendency to move in a direction opposite to the electric field. And so, and this in the direction, in the same direction as the field. So what happens? This kind of tends to shift here and these electrons, they start kind of moving like this. Do we get that? So earlier in the blue one, while there was no separation of charges, why? Because all those negative charges that were moving around the nucleus, they had their center, negative center at, at the nucleus itself. So it was like a positive and a negative one, both, both concentrated at the same point. I do not know how much physics you have studied and if there is a shell, that has got uniformly distributed charge over this, what happens? Say positive or negative, in this case it is negative, so let me take it as negative. So if it has a negative charge like this, like this, what have we studied in physics? That this charge behaves as if all of it is concentrated here. And then we use this for calculating the field, we use it for calculating the potential. Okay, so that's why since this whole electron is moving in a sphere around that, around the atom, its center is actually here only. But the moment you subject it to a field, the positive center pushes on that direction and the negative one comes like this. So it has a net negative here somewhere and a positive here not so not so distributed but here yeah, but yes the trouble is the trouble is we are dealing with trillions and trillions and trillions of such molecules so their impact becomes huge we understand now now if this 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 has got a capacity so so what i mean to say is if there is a minus Q and there is a plus Q here and this has a capacity to produce a field like this, then what happens? This neutral molecule will get polarized by it. Do we get that? It will get polarized by it. 